now all they need to do is pick the heroes that complement this faces void and then pick other the, those heroes that complement faces void right and just play your draft from there it, it's already uh, much better in my opinion for lift to win that being said navi do get lena position four probably the strongest position four in the game at the moment in terms of uh, bullying the enemy five and the carry but yeah. this could also be a mid lena because navi do have the last pick in this game yeah, she uh she she's pretty brutal. Uh, lift the wind, gonna respond with an enchantress, try and get a bit of laning presence of their own, and now you guys go straight in with the anti mage. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You most hated hero, Theban, but here he is. Navi is going to go for it in the first phase, no less. They really have the void. The funny so. thing is, mm. the funny thing is, Nomad is Anti Mage is one of my top three most played heroes in Dota Two. Like if I go <laughs> in my pub, pubs and stuff, I love playing this hero, right? But I know when a hero is bad in a patch, right? It. I think in competitive game it's completely different. A team can, you know, make a lineup around the anti mage, and you can pick it in good situations. In my opinion, right now, I don't think Navi picked this anti mage in a good situation. Like the Lina doesn't pair with the AM that well. The AM doesn't really have a good mana void target in the heroes that live to win have picked so far. And faces void and enchantress can be considered as counters to anti mage as well. Um, AM Void, it can go both ways depending on who's more farmed. But Ench is actually a pretty good hero against AM. Like AM hates. Uh, fighting into this impetus, and AM also cannot kill the Ench because of that uh, level 6 ultimate that Ench has just makes, reduces AM's attack speed to nothing and just becomes so hard. Yeah, I, I don't really understand it myself, but uh, I'm sure Live to Win, uh, sorry, I'm sure Navi have a plan on how to make this anti mage work. Yeah. Um, what it is, I don't really know. I mean, again, you know, Chronosphere, pretty good versus AM. You, if you pick up a Viper here as well on the side of Live to Win, like, I feel like you're going to have some serious problems because obviously you can just drop the AM super quickly inside the Chronosphere. Mm -hmm. If you drop the Nether Toxin in, that just enables a Void to bash him down. So, I mean, I imagine that's probably going to be an next ban from Navi, or do you think they're not really that scared of the Viper possibility? No, they are not. They don't care about Viper. They have too many physical damage output heroes that they need to get rid of. Like right now, they're bad Legion, Beastmaster. These are heroes that AM will now have a good time with, but also will buff lift to it. Slaughter, there you go. Yeah. Three offlane heroes that they already had to ban out. And now this gives lift to it pretty much option for so many different heroes that they can pick. They can pick, um, what would they want? I mean, they pick the Axe now to try and take that away. Any physical damage, essentially. Like, Templar Assassin could be an option for Live to win at some point. Mm. They're not the last pick. It could be good. Um, trying to think off the top of my head, a lot of offlaners are already banned right now. I don't think Live to win should have banned Mars. They could have taken it for themselves. Yeah, That could have been good. And with the Axe on go now as through. well, there's, there's not that many offlaners left in the bucket here for Live to win. Hmm... But yeah, I mean, physical damage is probably what they're going to end up going for. Um, yeah, they have their options open to them, honestly, though. The it, there's a Magnus still in the game. There's a Mag available. That could be a possibility. Yeah, uh, Mag Void. Yep. Yeah. It's also a Strength Hero um, that AM wouldn't have the best time against. Uh, probably better than all the other heroes. Like, these three they, that they banned out the Legion, Beast, Slaughter, they were good bans to yeah. protect the AM. They go with the Shadow Demon. So it's going to be a four Shadow Demon against Anti Mage. So you're going to have that disruption, burn the mana of the AM in the lane. Yeah. So it's not so bad. Um, also, throughout the game, like AM hates getting disrupted. That being said, there is Counterspell that can reflect the disruption. If you ever get Counterspell onto Shadow Demon, you can sometimes just solo kill him. Which is nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could be pretty funny. You've got uh, there's quite a few options for playing, but Axe absolutely loathes playing into Shadow Demon though. Like this guy's just super annoying. If you don't catch him inside the call, you know what he's gonna do. He's just gonna disrupt you, yeah. and you're gonna feel pretty bad about it. Um, so you can't really get off your spins. Save. You can't really get off your damage. Yeah, it's just a really big save, and just can be pretty annoying as well. Just general mm -hmm. frontliners don't like playing into Soul Catcher either. Uh, I don't think Demonic Purge, look, I mean, well, Demonic Purge is just always annoying. It doesn't have any particular specialities this game, but still going to be very annoying for the Axe to play into. And Shaman now picked up from Navi. They want themselves some lockdown, huh? Yeah, I think this could be like a five Shaman, or maybe what could be happening is they're flexing their Lina till the end, right? To see mm -hmm. if they can pick another mid laner. Then they're going to give either... Iceberg the Lina, or they're going to pick another position 5 hero, right? right. If Lina and Shaman the supports, then there's a possibility that Always Wanna Fly will play Lina, 
play with the axe in the offense as a five, and then Shadow Shaman will be played by Roger as a position four. There's also a possibility of that. Um, but he'll play with the anti mage. Because I think Shaman needs to be like a four, in my opinion. Like, it, it needs items. Um, and I have seen, like, like I uh, always on the fly play Lina's or position fours as fives. They yeah. go with the snap. Yeah, so. Ooh. Okay. So this is oh, like a mid lane. That's snap. cool. I like it because this snap is mid da damage and chrono, strength hero, mm -hmm. right? And then yeah. if you get to level 20, 25, you get that, you know, <laughs> yeah. the the right click from your shredder, and that stuff yeah. destroys anti mage. Like it, it actually destroys anti mage. So like their late game now is looking pretty solid solid against AM. Um they really didn't feel confident in picking like a TA because you don't want to have like dual carries in this patch, to be honest. So they don't go with the TA pick, but they do get the Snapfire, who can be very strong uh, throughout the whole game. Oh, I really like what they're putting down as well. I really hope we get to that level 25 and get to see some little Shredder with like, yeah. you know, Daedalus and MKB and Definitely. just smash heroes inside the Chronosphere. That would just be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very funny. Indeed, I, that's what that's what I'm really looking forward to as well in this game. Uh, but they have the damage of Chrono now, so anytime Void has Chrono up, like he's just gonna show up to a fight. Snapfire is gonna ulti. Uh, that being said, Navi they need to hunt the Snapfire, so they need to hunt Snapfire. They also need to hunt Shadow Demon in the team fights because if you don't cancel the Snapfire's uh, kisses, you're gonna get absolutely wrecked in these engagements. Oh yeah, um, but live to win. One problem they have right now is a lot of the good offenders are gone. Like, Navi is also batting the Centaur out now. Like, this is a, this is an offlane graveyard right now. Yeah, it's starting to feel that way, that's for sure. Hmm. Final bans coming out. They get rid of the uh, Ember and the Invoker on the side of Live to Win. Navi with the Centaur, as mentioned before. One will ban out from them. But yeah, there's really not many offloaders left for Live to Win. What was the one you mentioned ET? earlier? Oh, the, the, the mag. Is mag still an option? Or How no? about... Uh, mag could still be an option, yes. I'm mm -hmm. thinking Elder Titan, actually. Yeah, it could be nice as well. Sets up nicely for the Snapfire. You have Void, too. Like, that's crazy yeah. damage. Yeah, that could Inside be interesting. Inside the Chrono again. Oh, they banned it. Oh, they They're got the, the same wavelength. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a good ban. I mean, if we were, we're, we're stretching it right now. CK? Yeah. Do we got a CK in this or, game? Yeah, we do. I'm, I'm, I'm getting pretty crazy here as well. Earth uh, Spirit offlane. Can can you dig it? No, 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 no. no, no I don't dig right, it. I don't dig right. it. That that hero doesn't do anything to anti mage. That hero is a magic true. hero now. Yeah. Chaos Knight. I want I want Chaos Knight here. You want Chaos Knight? Okay, okay. I'm gonna put yeah, my chips yeah. down on. Uh, Magnus. Yeah, Magnus. Let's see it. Magor. Um, Magor Chaos. Oh, Knight, yeah. that guy. Oh, forgot about that guy. Bloodseeker. The only problem I have with Bloodseeker right now is they're really lacking the disables now. Right? Yeah, yeah, there's really little, like, just free stuns you can throw oh, out on people. And now oh, they get a storm. Oh, boy. That was yeah, a good that's a storm. Free storm. Pick. <laughs> that's yeah. a free storm. That's mm. the problem, right? Like, you pick this Bloodseeker, sure, it's a decent offlaner. It can do decently well against Anti Mage. And there it is. Always want to fly. It's going to be playing the Lina as the five. Yep, and then Roger's gonna be playing the Shaman as the four, and I still expect Lina to be paired with the Axe and the Shaman to be paired with the AM. Now Bloodseeker, ah, man, they don't have stuns anymore. That's that's a that's a pretty big problem. Oh, I just got excited over something very very nerdy. Uh, Roger's got himself the um, that cosmetic, you know the like the frog oh, yeah. cosmetic which like turns his yeah, shackle yeah, yeah, into yeah, a yeah. tongue. Dude, I still need it's it. So I still need it. Yeah, I've been yeah, I'm, PA. I'm, I'm, anybody, anybody wants to trade me, I'll trade them a Rubik Arcana for that Ooh. headpiece. Ooh. I will do it. That's, I think that's worth it, right? Does it? I, I don't know more. the market values, dude. I don't know. So yeah. Stop using this yeah. platform to, for, for your dodgy backroom deals, Steven. Honestly, get out of here. Let's get into this game. Game number two of Navi versus Live to Win. Who do you think is going to take this match, Steve? Um, You know what? Live to win this Bloodseeker last pick. Wasn't the biggest fan of it, but I still have to go with them. I, I still think live to win. They're, they're, they're going to they're gonna make this a three-game series. I would love to see a three-game series here, too. Okay, okay. What about you? I got, I 
I think I gotta go Navi. I, I do like Live to Win's draft as well, but this storm feels free. Like I, I mean, I it guess until free. the Atos it, it, comes out. Listen, it's... this is this is the biggest gamble I've I'll ever I've probably ever taken in my life. Okay, <laughs> like Navi have like stuns on every hero. Um, yeah. They have an anti mage. Like that for me, the only reason why I'm betting against Navi is because they have an anti. Like okay, okay, I, your I, hate of anti mage runs yeah, true. I don't bet on. I don't bet on anti mages. That's just for sure. So uh, I'll, tr- I'll I'll play for live to win. Yeah. You're you're playing for live to win. Okay, okay. So you want you want to place down uh, some wage? You know, a, a, a five uh, five pound charity bet on this one. The loser has to donate to charity. Um, if if live to win take the victory, then I'll pay it. If Navi take the victory and you pay it, how, how about how about how about how about a tweet? How, how about we bet a tweet on this game? Yeah, yeah. If you if you win. Well, well, I'll tweet something that you want. Okay, and okay. then the if I win, you'll tweet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but I'm gonna get you to tweet. Twitch Imagine chat is smarter than me. That's what, that's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna get you to tweet. I'm just letting you know right now. I mean, you know, fair enough. I I, I can take that. It's not that bad because you know, at least maybe uh, some <laughs> some guys will be like, you know, come around to my side. Like, yeah, this guy finally knows. Finally, a caster admits it, and I'm smarter than him. Anyways, uh, all right, them's the stakes, them's the odds, of course. Let's guys what, know what you think in the chat. Let's get into this game. Love to see a bit of Ukrainian uh, pride as well. You know, I, I love it when they do that. Navi, whenever they've got the, um, the the blue and the yellow player, they like to draw the flag on the mini map. <laughs> it's really cute. Anyways, uh, let's see how this one works out. Icebug's gonna be playing at mid, pretty uncontested on the Storm Spirit. Wow, he's ranked 25 on the Storm Spirit. This guy's playing a lot of storm. Magic is an abomination. Gotta fear it. Yeah, he has. He is a really big time storm player. I feel like he plays every other game storm spirit against Na- on Navi. Yeah, it's just so nice to watch him, and they always stack for him too. Plenty in the game. Ooh, Dude, I just realized something. No bad. Really nice. What's that? That was nice. Uh, they're actually putting the Lina into the safe lane, and they're putting the Shadow Shaman on top. So this Lina is not going to have that same level of impact, and it's not the best babysitter for anti mage as well. Meanwhile, a bit of zoning coming out from both teams. Sneko just going to force back V2 and always want to fly. Meanwhile, up at top, Roger gets a bit of damage off onto Dream, also back under the tower, and also goes for the small cap block as well with that sentry. So, all things considered, this game's looking probably more even than the last game. I think we both agree. Uh, this one is, is is looking very, very close in terms of just drafts and what can happen. But, you know, in the learning phase, anything can break down. I think in the mid, we're probably going to see FN with maybe a little advantage until level 6. And then the Storm's going to start to uh, be a bit of a threat. Maybe look some rotations. Meanwhile, at bottom... Always want to fly. Going to get silenced up here, surrounded by dire heroes. They've got a lot of damage coming out onto the Lina, but it's not going to be enough to bring her down as she makes her way under the tower and will survive. So a three-man rotation to start off the game doesn't quite go the way they wanted on the side of Live to win, but still a good amount of harassment coming onto the Lina. Yeah, they were hoping for a, a first blood or something of that sort, maybe onto Lina or something, but that's okay. Uh, Soneko is back top. Shadow Shaman going to be bullying out Enchantress for a bit, especially since she has Enchant level 1. <laughs> I love the uh, fighting over the small camp here. It's like, no, I will deward it. And he's got so much right click damage and with the Aether Shock as well, just you can't trade with the Shaman level 1. He does so much damage. Yeah. Soneko does have another sentry available though. To try and get rid of that. Some high octane support dewarding on dewarding. Wow, oh, Roger is aggressive. Look at this dude coming under the tower to get some more hits in into the enchantress. Oh, He's gonna courier. find the courier as well. A stick will not survive. I think he tried to give it across to Snake on the last second there, but couldn't quite do so. Roger even gives him the old tip as well. Very, very aggressive plays from Roger. And another D ward. Meanwhile, down at bottom, we have the anti mage being played by V Tune with Always Wanna Fly being played by, uh, sorry, playing the Lena. And uh, Afterlife will be on his Bloodseeker and Shire Demon being played by Immersion. So one little combo we haven't really mentioned, which could catch out the Storm and the Anti-Mage if they're really good with it, is of course the disruption into the Blood Rite. Now I imagine they've just got this got this one very well timed, so we'll see if they can actually land that one. That'd be pretty clutch if they could. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, we see B-Tune already not scaling up his mana break just because of uh, this disruption. 
I mean, a nice stun before she gets silenced up. I think she was just dead there if that stun didn't land. So, Bloodseeker would have been able to just chase her down, get a few hits out. Does have a fairy fire though, so yeah. maybe not as close as yeah, we think. Good old fairy. But still, fire. lots of pressure that's going to be coming on bottom lane. I really don't expect Vita to scale up this mana break at all in the laning stage. Really? That's how much he doesn't want to get yeah. his own mana burnt. Exactly. Uh, if you. The Shiny oh, can just disrupt the AM and put the illusions onto Lina, and it would be. Oh, way middle lane, Iceberg, getting very low FN. Can't quite finish the job, though. He's out of spells, but still. Oh, now the bottle picked up in a timely fashion by Iceberg here. FN so nearly brought him down there. Got very, very close to securing the kill, but in the end, couldn't quite do it. Yep, four minute power runes. We're going to be looking out for that. Uh, Snapfire's bottle not quite here yet. Opted for the Bracer, then the Magic Stick first. Against Storm Spirit. Enchantress going away to the far jungle camp to get a creep. So, so far, Navi doing really well on lanes. I think. As of right Smashing now. It. Yeah. Axe isn't really, doesn't really have a lot of last hits, but Lina. The f neither does the face's void. There's actually so much bursty on this Lena that she's never really in trouble with the fairy fire and the stick. Meanwhile, up at top, Roger could be the new target. It's Dream trying to bring him down. They've got the Sentinel Stomp as well, and that will be your first blood. Dream gets the kill with Suneko, and they're going to be able to get that nice amount of gold for their carry player. That's really good. They needed something like that. This Void only has 10 lassets in the top lane. Uh, who's getting the rune? Oh, we got the Snapfire. Double damage. Yeah. Not the best rune for the snap, but still going to be able to deny a lot of creeps against Iceberg. Yeah, that's the thing. Iceberg not quite sick, though. They're teeping in the Shaman here. Interesting, as they go in with the Electric Vortex. FN playing it quite defensively, though. Back. Yeah, they were trying to uh, bait them in, looks like. Yeah, FN does pop the DD now, so... It looks like Storm's just going to leave this lane and go jungle. Not going to fight into this double damage Snapfire. Yeah, makes sense. How's Suneko now? Suneko's almost level 3. Once he's level 3, that's when it gets really annoying for this Axe lane. The level 2 enchant, having a 60 second creep available to just keep following this Axe around. Yeah, the enchant with the impetus, just a lot of harassment damage into this Axe, but so far so good for generally. He's been able to take very good control of this lane. Um, that said, with that kill, Dream's going to be able to get himself something at least. But... Yeah, net worth, you know, he is still the poorest core, which is not where you want to be as a void. Yeah, Suneko now coming in with that ghost creep to help him out. Good creep to find. I see a play onto sure. Roger here. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of damage. Ooh, Ignoring the, the axe, trying to go for the kills, but uh, Roger's going to turn around with that lovely shackle. Unfortunately, though, I don't think it's going to be enough to save him. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, now, Iceberg goes down. They will get the kill onto Roger at least, but Dream taking some damage from this has a six, six stack of uh, magic one, sorry, nine. So it will be absolutely fine. But mid lane, a death. It looks like. Uh, they didn't even, oh, yeah, they did use Mortimus Kisses for it. Yeah, yeah the old cookie into Scatter Blast into Mortimus Kisses, and that's a freebie. Exactly. It was just a cookie into the kids. Like Storm was um, not level six yet. Still has like almost Radiant one creep XP away from six. He might have just wanted to wait for that before he came to the lane again. But taking full advantage of the level five Storm FN now level seven and a half, very high in XP. Like his next rotation to one of the side lanes is going to be so devastating for Navi. Yeah, this is a scary, scary snap fire. Meanwhile, I'll say it comes down onto Immersion down to the bottom lane. Vichy gonna turn around. Oh, the counter spell catches out Immersion. Taking a lot of damage from himself. They'll throw down the... Uh... No, he's dead. Vichy gets on top of him. Right clicks galore. One more hit will be needed. Creeps. Oh, it's not enough. Always want to fly flying right click. And they will take out Immersion. Always one fly, really tanking that damage from the blood right just to get a bit more harassment out onto the blood seeker. Meanwhile, up at top, they get out the shackle, but the ice. Oh, Iceberg comes in against the kill. Dream gets bought down. The big rotation in from the Storm Spirit secures a kill onto the faceless void as he continues to have an absolutely miserable time up here in the top lane. Oh, and again, you know, we're seeing a similar story. FN winning his lane at mid, but the side lane's going not quite as well as you would like on the side of Lift to Win. That's okay for now. Live to Win's timing is definitely going to be around 10 to 11 minutes when the anti mage is going to be sitting in the jungle, not wanting to join fights. Top lane, Roger and Soneko both getting a little bit low here. 
Oh dear, down goes Seneko and Roger. The support's just trading, but General could not be out of the woods yet. If a bash comes through from the faces void, he could be in some trouble. Do they have the Hellbear Smash? They don't. They don't. So, Axe's gonna make his way out of this one. Hellbear Smash, I won't be able to cancel that salve, unfortunately. Pretty even trade up in the top lane, all things considered. They're saying that Dream's actually been able to get himself a ton of CS after this as well. He's kind of taken control a bit. Yeah, he's okay. He's got the Chrono up. Snapfire, one TP to top lane. They're going to be able to get a kill onto the Axe. That's what he's waiting for right now. But the Snap does not have a TP up for another 30 more seconds. Bottom lane, in comes the Mornimus. Kisses, but cancelled out by the Mana Void. v just throws down that cooldown to make sure FN doesn't follow up on the kill. Onto always want to fly, and that'll be that. Iceberg's oh, coming will in that hot. Be that. The yeah, here he comes. Iceberg joins the fray, looking for the Shadow Demon. Cookie on forward is going to be enough to save Immersion. Iceberg really wants it. He's hungry for it. Haste under the tier one tower. The absolute lunatic's going for this kill, taking so much damage. In the meantime, he has got that haste rune though, and it is about to run out, but it doesn't matter. He's made his way to safety, and they will not get any retribution for that kill. Afterlife, meanwhile, just shoving his head into this bottom lane, but that is going to be that. They only get a shot, Demon. That's Ooh. okay. Uh, Rapture out onto where's one to fly. Cookie forward as well, and that's going to secure the kill. Effen's actually going to grab that with the cookie damage. Very nice. Oh, Iceberg mid, no mana. Mid. Oh no, Seneko catches him out. Void tries to go in with the Chrono Spear, gets instantly Hex. Doesn't matter though, comes out the other side, drops a Chrono Spear, does bring down that Storm. Now look it over towards Roger as well. Roger doesn't have a counter play. He's going to drop as well. Incredible rotation in from Liv to win to this middle lane. They take down two massive targets. Dyer's top tower is under and just like that, they're going to be able to pressure up this mid tower, and this is what Navi hates happening. This is where Anti Mage can't do anything, can't join the team fights really, doesn't have really good mana boy targets. They have to force the Lina and the Axe to TP mid. Axe cancels out though, so he's going to still continue to stay Dyer's top. That means Live to Win have a chance to just go back into this tower again. They want to, they want to, but two more TPs no, more coming TPs. from Navi. My goodness, they love this tower. Dude, that, that, that's so much space now for Liv to win, right? They can't make any plays on bottom now or the top side. Uh, this gives an opening for Liv to win to make a smoke play, but they are kind of low on mana. What's up? If you want some relationship advice, what, just, just find a girl that loves you as much as Navi loves their middle tier one tower. You're set. Oh, everybody loves their middle tier one tower, though. Not as much as these boys. Meanwhile... Snake, oh, General and Beachoon, oh, and, and Iceberg, yeah, this is a dead little deer, unfortunately. Bye-bye, Snake. Yep, three cores, doesn't have Untouchable yet, unfortunately. Dream is gonna chill top, though, he's not feeling scared of anyone, to be honest, up here. But he's also not gonna be able to farm, so he's just gonna get out. Well, my guy's going Midas. Interesting. Hmm, yeah. A bit awkward, but, you know, it's still a farming item, right? That's what Void does. He just needs to farm. Yep. So, go for it. Gives him that mad attack speed as well to get off those time locks. So, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't hate it. I don't love it. Don't hate it. Kind of meh. Yeah. I think Void is one of the heroes where, like, Midas is kind of on right now. Because it's a pretty huge DPS item for him, too. And Midas, Mask of Madness, like, it's pretty much everything Void needs. You know what? During the uh, the broadcast, we should come out with the uh, you know any any wish list suggestions for the patch coming on Thursday. We have an engagement in the middle lane. Roger's going to be the target. Monomus kisses coming over the top. They're going to be able to bring him down with relative ease and even throw a couple of iceberg and always want to fly as well, chasing them off. But uh, yeah, for this patch, you know, I want something I've always wanted. It's that when a hero gets to uh, 100 HP, I want you to be able to minus them. Minus an enemy hero or a friendly wow. hero. Screw it. I mean, that'd be pretty OP though, because now you can't outplay <laughs> your opponents, you know? What if you have a big magic wand and then they Midas you right no, you before you ready for your wand? That feels don't, bad. Don't let yourself get to 100 oh, HP. God. Let's Come not on. make Midas mainstream. Thank you. Alright, what about 1% of your HP pool? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn it. Dazzle's officially it's so awkward. <laughs> Dazzle's already dead, but we're just going to make him even more dead. Anyways. 
Uh, always want to fly, having some troubles in the middle lane as Neko starts the engagement here. Dream's got to come in as well, and I think they're going to be able to drop this Lina, though. It does return with the Laguna Blade on Seneko, and now I suppose trying to follow up onto the Enchantress. Dream finally deals with Always Want to Fly, but V-Tune's got to come in and take down Seneko, and now Dream's going to be in some trouble as well. He has got that Time Walk available, but he's getting his health taken away. Time Walk away. In comes V-Tune, getting on top of him. Faceless Void on the run. Does he have a team? I don't seem to be here. Steals the double damage, but in comes the big mana Void to take down the Faceless Void. Where were his teammates? They didn't seem to be coming. Yeah, they were kind of hitting the tower middle. Um, and then they're like, oh shoot, our Void needs help. And then they tried to go over there, but it was just too late already. That was really convenient because Vtune was nearby. Sees the one hit on the Enchantress, blinks and hits them. And then Storm's like, oh hey, Anti-Mage is in the scene fight. That's not normal, but let's just go for this Void anyway. And then just burn his mana slowly but surely. Got a pretty big kill now. That's going to help AM quite a lot, actually. Certainly is. It certainly, certainly is. Well, this it, game, it's uh, certainly spicy. I still think Navi are in a pretty good position, personally. There's AM, he's top of net worth, the Iceberg's having a pretty good time as well. These two greedy cores have gotten through the laning phase with relative ease. It's really about how much pressure Live to Win can put in in the next few minutes, and they're going to try and do exactly this with a smoke at mid. Yeah, the mid tower dead. This jungle jungles are quite exposed for Navi. I would love to see this Kisses actually go on a much more important kill than just the supports. I feel like they haven't really done as much as they could have pairing up these uh, key spells from Live to Win. Like what? We got Rupture, Chrono, uh, we haven't seen those go on to the AM or the Axe yet and I think these two are the big kills right now. Yeah, for sure. But uh, Dream's not going to be really that interested in using his call. I mean, maybe he should be. I don't know. Like, yeah, I feel like this guy just wants to hit creeps, but at the same time, I mm -hmm. think he should be fighting when his chrono is up. What do you think? He doesn't have a TP right now. If it's like a really easy TP into time walk chrono play, then he'll do it. But he's not going to go out of his way to pop the chrono at the moment, I think. The smoke play from Lift to Win doesn't really hit. They managed to take like a creep stack, but that's pretty much it. I think Live to Win do want to fight though right now. They're just um, a bit cautious because FN is 200 gold away from the Ags and that could be a big item that can help them in the next engagement. Yeah, yeah, they're just going to be patient, wait for it, get themselves this lovely Aghanim Scepter and blast the Bloodseeker into the engagements first. Yeah, the only thing I hate about waiting is like sometimes you're just waiting and waiting and waiting. It's like someone's like, oh, I got this item on the way. I got this item on the way. And then yeah. eventually the enemy just has everything they need and then you go fight them. But sometimes you just got to fo follow your senses and just go with the play, get a kill, get, build some momentum, and then you're going to get your item eventually. Regardless. Oh boy, talking about getting items though, Storm has finished this Orchid and Navi want to make a play with it. They are smoked up into the mm -hmm. enemy jungle, seeing what they can find. There is Seneca under the tower, not the most high priority target, but certainly will go down if they get on top. And the blink forward from General, oh my goodness, they just dropped so much onto the pool. Oh no, Immersion okay. TP is this one as well. Dream gonna pop down the Chrono Spear, trying to bring down the Storm Spirit. Uplights here as well to drop down the Blood Bright. Perfect from Live to Win as they get one. They're gonna look towards General as well. General goes for the TP away. Meanwhile, always want to fly. It's gonna get killed off by Afterlife and Dream. Meanwhile, it's an easy TP out for the Axe. He's going to survive this, but uh, all things considered, a big, big win for Liv to win. Now if he's getting a little bit carried away with that play. But, and there's always a but, the Anti-Mage, he is just farming his little pants off. Yeah, and they also get the mid-tower too on Roger. So they even that out too. It wasn't actually the worst Call loss. Call it here mid. Uh oh, it could get a bit worse as they oh, jump sorry, forward onto it. FN. He needs a way out of this one. He doesn't have one. He's going to get popped. Feature gets himself a kill onto the enemy mid lane. The highest net worth hero on the enemy team goes down. Now it becomes a win for Navi. Big win. Big win there for Navi with that Snapfire getting killed off. Anti Mitch also gained the last hit too. He's going to be so close to that uh, Manta now. Just like what, 2,000 gold? Oof, we're looking at like a 18 and a half minute Manta. Radiance top tower is Not as good as last tower. game, but you know, considering he's got a Battle of Fury, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's pretty damn good. Oh, it's really, really good. <laughs> this is as fast as it's gonna get for an Anti-Mage. And they yeah. get an Immersion kill too. Oh, dude, yeah. these two win are really just... crumbling right now. He was kind of stuck. He was just kind of chilling in the tree line, hoping Navi would just leave. Um, and they didn't. Dream. No, They're not gonna no, stop no, chasing surely, Dream. Surely, surely not. This he is a hero that can't fall hit. Oh my god, he doesn't. He needs to fight. 
No, they want to fight. They want to fight this. Okay, okay. Like, he has no TP. They have no way of actually getting out. It's close. Me, Molo, jump on the V2. V2 is going to blink himself away and get himself killed. He didn't really have a choice there. It's a model's kisses were coming through, but there we go. Chooses to rip off the band aid, use a rupture, and get himself killed by Bloodseeker instead. Meanwhile, though, always want to fly. We'll go down in the back to Dream. So, uh, all right, all right. There we go. There you go. That's how you rescue Private Faces Void. Yep, that was a really good bait from him, too. And then they're, like, chasing him. Everybody from Live to Win TP's down. He makes it really hard. He let Navi know that he's still there, pretty yeah. much, right? By using that time dilation. And it's like, oh, I'm over here, guys. Chase me. And it gave enough time for Liv to win to TP in and get this big pick off onto the anti mage. So that 19 and a half minute Manta, not looking like it anymore. Time for the big questions, though. Did he actually come to lane without Town Portal Scroll to, uh, you know, to, to, to make that bait happen? No, no, no. He did not really expect Navi to follow him all the way. He just was following the creeps, to be honest, on Dream. God, but it. it worked out in the end. Yep. Oh, and in they oh, go, here we go firing in the void. Boo! Don't find anyone, unfortunately, but there we go. Sad trombone, very fitting. Anytime the anti-mage uh, blinks in now, on any creep wave, FN will not hesitate to just gobble up and toss someone in there. No. And he's going to have to be very careful, because that does a lot of damage. Ooh, sneaky Roshan from Navi. <gasps> Ooh, sneaky, dear. sneaky. Oh dear. He's going down pretty quickly. They need to get themselves over here. Will they figure it out? Yep, I... Iceberg is showing bottom. This is super sneaky rush. It's really good. From Navi here. Really, really good. And there is absolutely zero inclination on the side of Live to Win currently that Roshan is happening. It is taking some time though. They have time to figure it out, but do they? They've got a blood right now. They have no they have absolutely no idea this is going on. And this is gonna be a really, really big play from Navi. Three, two. One, and uh-oh, we're in some trouble, and Bloodseeker's actually gonna get dropped as well. The dunk comes down, Afterlife will fall, Vichun picks up the Aegis. A series of very fortunate events for the side of Na'Vi. They are so far ahead right now. That's scary. Mm -hmm. Yep, and also just 600 from Manta. This Aegis is gonna help this anti-mage a lot in terms of joining the next team fights with this Manta style. Yeah. We kind of see here and there where AMs, even though they are Manta, they don't feel comfortable blinking into engagements unless it's perfect. But with Aegis, he's going to be able to do that. I'm, yeah, do you, do you even think they want to fight that much though? I think they just kind of want to take in any engagements which they view as being good, but otherwise just kind of farm up and find you in the late game probably. Mm, they probably want to fight. They, they okay. have the Axe with the Blink Blame Mail, they got the Storm with the Orchid. They, this, the timing where they're actually stronger than Live to Win. So you want to push your advantage. Roger finds uh -oh. a Bloodseeker. Yeah, they have got a cookie. FN actually coming up right into the faces to get the gobble up throwback, trying to turn it around onto Roger, and they'll be able to do that perfectly. Cute little play from FN as the anti mage tries to blink himself oh. away, but he's been ruptured up. This is going to be his first life going, probably, although pretty scary to come close. Ice Bug actually going to come around the back and nab the kill onto the Chrono. Bloodseeker. It looks like, do they have the damage? Looks like they do. Oh, disruption comes in. The Chrono Spear lands just onto the Storm Spirit and the anti mage as he respawns. Bloodseeker trying to limp himself away from this one. Got to be so careful, but they're going to be able to bring down the Storm. Beautiful Chrono from Dream. Beautiful plays from live to win they neutralize the aegis and get themselves a kill into the storm spirit in the process that is how you do it oh they were looking for that anti-mage kill too but general making that clutch clutch berserkers call onto the void i feel like he should have done it before the chrono came out but he really waited he still gets the void saves the am at least the storm does die but that's okay the storm kill is not that big of a deal for live uh for navi i think the anti-mage getting away is definitely going to be way more of a win here. And also Kronos on cooldown, so they can just yeah. go again. Yeah, they need to. But watching that replay back, was the Axe cool? I don't know, it, it kind of felt like he didn't want to blink into the Chrono there, I think is what his, his, his decision was. So he waited until the Chrono came out and then just tried to catch him on the edge, which he did so very, very well. Probably saved the AM, mm -hmm. but couldn't save the storm. General? Uh, yeah, all oh, the cookie He's lands. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mule Vichin gets killed kill Snake on the back lands. And then faces void. Face of void. Oh, oh, my God. What the hell just happened? What? Uh, how did... <laughs> he's, uh, he's dead, uh, folks. All right. That's a terrible trade now for Liv Three to win. spins, uh, 1,300 damage reflected by the blade mail. Beaching gets another kill. Jesus, spinning tops, eh? They're pretty uh, strong. It was, 
it was also because of Mask of Madness, right? It reduces your armor, so your physical damage gets right. reflected to you, yeah. and it, it does even more damage to you because the blade mail is reflecting physical there. Oh, Oof. dude, that's crazy. That's got to feel so bad for Liv to win now. They finally found this axe. Finally, they're going to get a pick off on him, and the Void dies for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a face in the keyboard moment for the void, unfortunately, because you know that's one of those things we didn't expect it. He doesn't expect it. It's it's just Dota. Sometimes she'd be a cruel mistress, and this time most certainly was the case. Yeah, and the anti mage just keeps getting ahead of this faces void. Now up four thousand, five thousand gold almost. That's an entire big item. B tune has over Dream here, and this is where the big differences in this game the two carries scary scary stuff these Dyer's carries scary stuff indeed well Dyer's bottom tower has fallen Iceberg now has a BKB complete too he's gonna have a pretty easy time going into the back lines and shutting down FN now Yeah, that's definitely going to be the main to dream. target to try and just disable this player as they jump forward onto Dream once again. Emergence is going to come in, throws down this disruption. That might actually be enough to save him, but no, they get the Orchid out before, before the disruption comes through. Emergence is going to TP himself away. Dream dies for a second time in a row. His game has just absolutely been slammed into a brick wall. Bottom? F -N. Okay, there's some interesting plays going on. Looks like they were looking for a very greedy play onto the Snapfire, and this has not really gone how they hoped. FN gets himself the yeah. double, and uh, yeah, that, that was very greedy. Now they're making two plays at the same time. They saw the Anti-Mage top, so that was like, okay, three heroes top. So Lina probably only has an axe down here. Let's try to make a play. They do really well in getting two kills. So this game's gonna come down to FN now, I think. Like, the phases Void is kind of really falling off at the moment. Needs that BKB. But FN, if he gets to level 20, gets that low Shredder, use your attack damage, it's mm -hmm. gonna be doing a lot of damage after that. He's, got, he's already queued up the crystals. That's it. Yeah, he knows what's He up. knows his role in the game now. Exactly. Yeah, he did have the MKB queued up, but instead decided to go for the Chrysalis, realizing that they're probably going to need a bit of damage a little bit earlier than that MKB, which I, I think is definitely the right call. They are actually in a lot of trouble on this live to win side. Like, one or two more fights, which go really badly for them. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, it's going to be second Aegis, going the way of Na'Vi, and then uh, they're probably going to be on your high ground. Need some answers quick. So, let's have a look at that some being... items. Storm has BKB and Orchid, absolute menace. Not going to really care about the disruption in science combo anymore. Only really fears the uh, Chronosphere, to be honest. Exactly. Shadow Shaman. I feel this game, Roger, has been having so much impact like on this hero. And I love the build, too. Just maxing out Hex, maxing out Shackles. You have so many disables against this Void and this Bloodseeker. Uh, it's really nice. And it makes pretty much Live to Win half the focus, Roger, no matter what. Or else he's just gonna be locking your heroes down. I really like that. Aether Lens going for Blink next for that positioning. Yeah, the Aether feels so good when you're playing into Chronosphere as well. Can just uh, drop down the Hex sometimes unexpectedly. Very, very strong. Meanwhile, all the time, we haven't really seen the same kind of game impacts coming out. I mean, Shadow Demon's made a couple of good saves. The Enchantress did quite a lot in the laning phase. As, as usual, just kind of like this hero which runs around throwing spears at people in the mid game. But yeah, not really quite having the same game impact as supports on the side of Na'Vi. Yeah, definitely not. Especially, like, Soneko just. Not sure what really happened to him in this game. Uh, maybe it's just too much magic damage, or he doesn't really have that hero who can lead the fights for him. Guess they're kind of lacking on that. And yeah. looking back on this draft too, I really like uh, my feeling on this Bloodseeker was right. You know, it just doesn't feel that good in this game. Um, his score is like four to six, but the amount of impact he's had in this game doesn't feel too hot. Yeah, I mean, he's he's kind of been the solution to the anti mage though. The the only kills they've had on this anti mage has been from ruptures. But I agree that like the anti mage wouldn't one. be such a problem. <laughs> yeah, well, true, but uh, right. you know. The anti mage wouldn't be such a problem if uh, they'd had a better hero in the laning phase to kind of put some pressure on him, but uh, there we go. They didn't really have many offlaners to pick from in the end, and that's the one they decided to go for. Bounce runes will spawn, it's going to be two for two. 
FN nearly, nearly, nearly level 20. Needs just a level and a half to get there. It's so important for this team that FN hits that level. And they mm -hmm. can actually offer something inside these Chronospheres to bring heroes down. The multi-shot from 25, that's a huge one too, right? You get the um, crits, and then even if, if you see the anti-mage blink in, you can hit pretty much the Mantas and the hero all at the same time. And just find the real AM. Try Here to kill him go. or something. Wraparound players being made from live to win. Soneko leading the charge. Doesn't really mind if he pops the smoke and goes down. It's just looking to set up for the Chronosphere, but Navi, they're hyper aware of this. They drop the wards and they get themselves away. Gem with the TP oh. out. FN. Oh my goodness, a fraction earlier and they would have caught him, but not quite there in time. And another hero actually gets out right in front of FN's face as well. He sees two of them TP away. Instances from getting a stun cancel there. I'm not sure if you noticed that, but when when uh, Soneko planted that ward, the ward of Navi that was on top of the sentry died like one second before that ward came down. So when that ward came down, they're like, guys, there's smoke right here. Boom. Storm zips out, Axe blinks away, Lina goes into the trees, and they just get out. Just like that. So unfortunate for Navi that they don't catch anything. Sorry, so unfortunate for Live to Win that they don't catch anything here. Absolutely brutal. Well, that is a big, big waste of time and a big loss from Lift when they really wanted to try and make something happen with this Chronosphere. They didn't. Now it's uh, back to the drawing board, unfortunately, but they're going to try and put some pressure on the Tier 1. Unfortunately, they're shoving in these lanes inside of Navi very nicely, mid and bot being pushed in pretty damn hard, so they're going to have to come back and deal with this one. Yeah, the anti-mage is so big now. This Abyssal Blade, he can pretty much burn all of Void's mana in the fights before he BKBs or just jump onto the Snapfire. It's gonna go straight up into the high ground and Lift to Win have to react to this. They don't have the option to just keep going. 27 minutes into this game. This anti mage is just so far ahead of everyone. Jesus, how much gold yep. ahead of the Void is he now? Uh, that's, that's, that's looking like it's 7,000 gold ahead. Yep. He is 7,000 gold ahead. I mean, this game, Live to Win, they had to make at least one or two plays that would have netted a kill onto AM, right, yeah. earlier on. That's a chrono, or AM messes up a blink, and then you get like a rupture on him or something, but they just couldn't do it. And one of the reasons why is because like the Bloodseeker is not a setup in this game either. So the Void's pretty much your only setup to the AM. He didn't have a lot of threats. Every time he saw Void go off the map, he was just like going into a really defensive position on B2. Well, we have Storm jumping forward, just grabbing that regen rune. Really wanted that one. And now they jump forward onto the FN face. Oh my goodness, the Hex comes in onto the face of Void. That was pixel perfect from Roger. They bring down Dream and FN. The cores are gone. They'll move forward for more. Shadow Demon is going to drop a buyback. Comes out from the face of Void. Not sure why though. This fight is already dead and buried. And Seneco, he's going to be going to the ground right next to his fallen teammates. Another hero dead. Iceberg with this regen rune doing whatever the hell he wants. That is just <laughs> not good. <laughs> that, that's just Yeah, not that good. was a word. Get a ward on the high ground, and it was so easy for Navi to just find the best possible target, which was oh, the Snapfire. No. We know how important FN is. He's the one who does all the damage on the side of Live to Win. As soon as he's dead, there was no more fight there. And like that's they, it. They could have made something happen with that Chrono Spear, but Roger pre casts the Hex onto the, the Faceless Void, canceling yeah, out the Chrono vision. immediately. Yeah, they have the vision, they, they have the fight, that's it. Got to be aware of those high ground wards. A big, big misstep from Live to Win. Pretty much costing them the game. I mean, it's, it's going to be extremely difficult for them to come back from this one. Daddy Gaben says 2% chance. I imagine that's probably going to drop a little bit further when it updates and realizing the bottom ranks have fallen as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Live to Win was pretty much one team fight away from making this game even. And now they're like probably three team fights away yeah. before they could even make this game close that being said they need to take you know some baby steps use the chrono maybe get a kill on am we saw am lose all his mana in the last fight yeah they have their cooldowns axe just gonna again. jump in though sees everybody hey guys how's it going gets a call off onto two i spoke gonna follow up as well they'll be able to drop the shadow demon though he does actually get the disruption off onto himself dream can't really find a target to drop that chrono and now the abyssal blade comes onto his face oh no anti-mage gets on top of him kills off the faceless boy effing on the rubber they're just gonna call it him and that is it and that really is it the gg well played to cool and the, the celebratory laguna blade onto a creep
as 30 minutes in, Na'Vi will take game number two, drawing this series out to a 2-0 close. That was clean. That was a clean game two. Very, very nice. Yes. Indeed. And huge props to Na'Vi's top lane, I think. Axe and Shadow Shaman did such a good job at just shutting down this void, essentially making the game so hard for him and live to win. Now this void who had to catch up could no longer make any plays. And that kind of just made it very difficult for their strategy, right? They had one stun, essentially. They had this cookie, and then they had, like, Void's Chrono. Yeah. So nothing reliable on the side of Live to Win. Navi, everything was super easy for them. Essentially, going smoke somewhere, Hex, you know, throw your spells, they're dead, or Axe Call, or Storm jumps in with BKB. It was a very simple game for them, and they did exactly that. Yep, simple is one way to put it. Thorough is another way to put it. Brutal could even be another way to put it. They just absolutely smashed it out of the park. That was some really nice gameplay there from Navi, showing that uh, you know that they again want to try and make themselves known as a contender for the best squad in CIS and probably the best squad in the EU CIS region. You know, DPC is it's on the horizon now. Only a month away, in fact, almost exactly a month away until we're going to get started with the DPC leagues. Yes, we have a patch to come the 